Hey everyone, I am here with Eileen today. Hi everybody. And she's part of the garden club too and we're going to take a look at her garden. So we're here in my front yard. I started gardening mainly vegetable gardening, but over time I've expanded to my front yard with flowers. Um, this is the year of the coneflower. They are just coming up everywhere. I had an azalea that was beautiful a few weeks ago and little by little I've sort of created other little beds. Um, this is called Nufofia. It's going to send up a beautiful yellow spike. Here's the bud and these two cone flowers are a hybrid. It's called Pow Wow. It's a smaller version. The hookahs I've been growing now and separating them and putting them in different spots. I love the leaf color. This is a grass I had from last year that held on and I added some annuals to it. Over here, I have a lot of Elysium that comes up that I just love having it as ground cover. This is a butterfly bush that actually grew on its own. A seed came from my older butterfly bush and it actually seeded itself in a good spot. They'll be opening up in the next week or so. Here I have a mum that I planted a few years ago. So in the fall, we'll enjoy this. Whenever I have a blank spot, I like to put a pot just to add some color. And as certain things spread out, I'll move the pot. That's the loja in there? Yes. Okay. And this is bigger than I ever expected. It's a type of salvia. I have columbine popping up all over. The seeds are gonna spread themselves and kind of naturalize. And I have a little hollyhock over there, also in the back. Here I have a peony, a friend of mine, her parents had passed away and mm. before the house was sold, she dug it up and I took a piece. So I think of her every time it blooms and I had some beautiful alliums here that my grandson helped me plant. Over here, this is a blue fescue. I have a couple of them. It adds a nice little bit of texture and color. Very nice. So here's a little overview of the front yard. And then we're gonna go to the side uh, now and all the way to the backyard. I have a lot of tomatoes that pop up from uh, volunteers from last year. So I'll dig them up and move them around. Here's some tomato volunteers. We'll be surprised at what kind they are. They look so healthy. Very nice, this little walkway that you have here. And flowers have popped up, but I just let them go. They're great for pollinators, but my Yellow zucchini is, I have my first one ready to pick. And a lot more in the way, it looks great. Do you have any green zucchini too this year or mostly the yellow? Um, I will, so far I just planted the yellow, but I'm gonna start some green as well. And here's another peony plant that I enjoyed a few weeks ago. What color are the blooms on this one? These are pink with like a fluffy center. The mm -hmm. ones in front are white. Oh, nice. Um, I bought a couple of beautiful big eggplants at Costco a couple of weeks ago. Wow. And I have another one that's over here. We have a bud already. Oh, I love your sign. <laughs> that's so cute. Did you make this? I had a sign that was bought, but when my sister came, she's very talented, We it needed a little restoration, so that's been uh, improved. And I bought a few plants online that I put in pots, and then I'm going to decide where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. Both of these are a variety of hydrangeas. We'll see how well they do, and then I'll find a home for them. Oh, this is some cuttings that I brought from 
Florida that rooted, and I'll be adding it to my garden. This is called Eryngium. So I bought the bulb and planted it. Wasn't sure what it was going to look like, but it's really interesting. Um, I it's full of bees, full of a, pollinators. Look at this. Yes. And wherever I find my tomatoes popping up or other seedlings, I start them and am happy to give them away. Moving along, I have a couple of batches of pea pods, and they are delicious. Those are the sugar snaps? Yes. They look great. And my pride and joy are my cucumbers mm -hmm. that I'm starting to pick. Oh, look at that. We have That's a couple so many. ready. Yeah, one here. There's These are market one. more. And I really like your trellising system here, Lynn. So you just laid uh, mm -hmm. on the side and the, the, the cucumbers hang underneath. So yeah. it's easy for this you to is, harvest. It's made for cucumbers oh, that's to good. grow that way, which is very convenient. Another little pretty tag here with the cucumber. Very nice. And Where did you get those trellis from? I believe I got this trellis from Gardener's Supply. It looks great. And my lettuce is booming. It's about to come out, but in the meantime, we're enjoying plenty of salads. And you got more tomatoes here. Those are all volunteers, Eileen, all these tomatoes? Yes. So you don't know what they're going to be? I so don't. They're surprise tomatoes. Um, <laughs> they look like they're going to be cherry? cherry variety. It could either be Sweet 100, Sweet Million, or Black Cherry, which is a variety I enjoy. Here's a Black Cherry plant that I bought so that I, uh, I'm sure I have that variety coming. Yeah, yeah, those are very tasty. I enjoy liking to eating those too. And I compost as a rule and I know that I had buried some butternut squash seeds here and sure enough we're getting we're getting fruit already. That's great. How, how big do you think this plant's going to get? Like um, a butternut squash. It may grow Go up over. and over and take over the <laughs> fence. It's going to break out of its uh, confines here. But this trellis is very nice too. It's a very nice setup. I like that as well. You have great, the tomato cage is also great. This one over yeah. here looks really this, good. This style I got from Gurney, which is another mail order company. Um, and you say they fold, they're easy to put away at the end of the season? Yes, they collapse and are easy to store. As well as this one, which we can put away, it, it folds up like an accordion. These tomato cages I also got online and I can take them apart and store them. But I like trying a variety of support systems. And those tomatoes are volunteers too? These are uh, San Marzano. Oh, I, nice. I know I bought three San Marzano that I planted right here. And uh, this is a rose that w was here when we bought the house and it's already produced. I have a lot of chives here. This is my chive mm -hmm. row. They have already bloomed too, all the chives? They haven't bloomed yet, but I, I enjoy putting the flowers and salads. Oh yeah, they're tasty. This tomato, I have a tag. It's a sweet 100. We got a lot of fruit on it. Oh, nice. And this hydrangea that was here when I moved in is blooming beautifully. It's very beautiful. And my raspberries, this is a section of it, and they are coming into their own. I originally bought six plants, and the first year I was getting fruit. I believe these are heritage variety, and they just keep expanding, and I have another section on the other side. I have, from a cutting that a neighbor gave me, I have a fig tree, and I looks like I'm getting fruit already. 
where are you planning to plant this fig tree? Do you have a space yet or are you still trying to decide? As long as I can keep it here because I think it's protected and it won't freeze. So we're, I'm going to keep it in a big pot as long as I can. I had my best supply of strawberries this year. They're just about done, but I have them in a couple of places. I did find I have one. Well, this oh, one. Oh, there's one here. Yeah. Yeah. Someone needs a bug. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to share it with the bugs. Yeah, that's part of the garden. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this was an idea that my sister gave me. It's a great tool. Um, it's a great way to store my tools right out here in the garden. And then we painted it just to have it fit in. This section over here, I have a lot of herbs. We have sage and we have um, oregano. I'm gonna try to come over this and side. And lavender, the purple is lavender. Um, I'm trying to keep mint out of this part of the garden mm -hmm. because it'll take over. I have my mint section, but I see a few popping up. And then I started a lot of broccoli over the winter in the winter sowing jugs. I had so many plants. So these are some of them. They're just about finishing up. I'm gonna pick some and I'll see if the flowers go to seed. This was some chard that I'm letting go to seed. I decided to plant a piece of potato, so we have potato going. And this is my corral for my mint, but I do use a lot of mint and share a lot of mint. I've got arugula popping up everywhere. I have my compost bin that I put a lot of the garden refuse in. I don't put too much food in here because I don't want pests, but uh, I usually move this from place to place, let it sit here a year or two, decompose, and then start over. So I've got two varieties growing here. This is Ambrosia, and the tassels just started. Um, haven't I see the very beginning of my first ear down here. And when did you plant those? They're so big already. Um, I did plant them pretty early, and then couple of weeks later I started another variety. This is Silver Queen and I put them in a bed. I, over the winter I used this bed for garlic. So oh, yeah. I think it's just about ready. You want to pull? Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is a purple garlic. I got scapes. It's the first time I grew a hard neck variety and mm -hmm. I picked the scapes and made a pesto out of it. It was delicious. Yes. When it was cooler, I was picking kale and Swiss chard and sauteing it for breakfast with eggs and it mm -hmm. was a delicious, fresh, healthy breakfast. And this broccoli looks very nice here too. Yeah. It's time for it to come out soon. I love that one over there. That one looks perfect. Yes. This, but this is okay now eat like that. So. Oh, and back here. Let me make you some space. <laughs> So I had planted some beet seeds here. I've had a good crop of beets. Usually I just get tops, oh. which are great for salads, but I'm actually getting beets this time. Nice. Look at this harvest. We got the garlic and the beets. Oh, <laughs> there's another good one. Tomato is a volunteer, but I think it's a blush, artesian blush, because I had that growing last year. And you can see some stripes in them, right? Yes. Beautiful. And more arugula. This is a um, one, a big tomato, a beefsteak. This is an eggplant that I started from seed. It's called Little Finger, so um, I'm interested to see how that comes up. This is some beets that came back from last year that I'm also just, I'm curious to see if it goes to seed. Have a little bit of peas growing in here as well. And a strawberry, I see. Yep. And 
I had planted a lettuce mix. This is charbel. So this was a variety of the French lettuce mix. I grew, I planted um, watermelon radishes. I did not get any. They all bolted, but I am letting them go to seed and I'm gonna try again. This is another volunteer, but it's loaded. It looks like a Roma tomato variety, yeah. like a base tomato, yeah. Which I did grow last year, so maybe it's... I love your sign so much. <laughs> it's so cute. Here are some green onions that I bought at the store, cut the bottoms off, just stuck the bottoms in, and got a whole new plant. So I could keep doing this. Um, I think I'll pull it up for a salad. We're gonna cut the bottom off and replant it and keep getting green onions. Just that much and it'll grow. So over here I let flowers grow. It's a lot of um, perennials and they just do their thing. It's a little too thick with cone flowers, but. They're beautiful though. The cone flowers yeah. make it so pretty. And I have a lilac that was in beautiful bloom a few weeks ago. It's nice and shady here. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, this is a hibiscus, a Rose of Sharon that reseeds itself everywhere, but they do have a beautiful flower in the, in the late summer. Um, here, I bought this a few years ago. This is a oak leaf hydrangea. It's called uh, peewee, I think. It's full of bees. The yep. pollinators love yep. it. Look at this. I don't know if they're showing up in the camera, but there's so many bees here. And I have a variety of different daylilies in here. This is called balloon flower. So they're starting to... Oh, how pretty. Never seen those before. They, the buds look like a balloon and then they pop open. Oh, that's nice. More echinacea. I love your echinacea. So yeah. pretty. Yeah. This is a different day lily. This is called Stelladoro. And they're easy to divide and separate and spread out. And here's a hollyhock. Wow, it's so tall. Beautiful, beautiful flower. The problem with hollyhocks, they get a lot of rust. So I pull off these leaves when they're infected and throw them away, try and keep it under control. Mm -hmm. Good to know. And hollyhocks are biannuals? Or yeah. they... But the seeds keep dropping, so I get them popping up here and there. Oh, that's good. Here's more of that oryngium. It gets so tall, that arrangement. Yeah. I didn't know it would get this tall. Full of bees. I, I think it's, they're native, right? I think so. Is there another name for this one? Like a common name? I can't yeah. remember. Um, blue? Sea, blue sea holly. Oh, sea holly, yeah. Now we're moving along to my, uh, my arugula. It, this one is a different one. It has a little bit of a sharper leaf. Do you know the variety or? I don't. It's so nice. It looks so nice. And back here, I tried a new variety of tomato. It's called Midnight Snack. Wow. So that's going to that. be nice and dark. Beautiful color. And what is all of this yellow stuff here on the ground? I love that. This is Creeping Jenny. Creeping it's Jenny. It's Golden Creeping Jenny. It's gotten a little out of control, but I'll dig up sections and they're beautiful in pots to kind of drape oh. over nice. and they stay this color this it yellow. does it's a very pretty color and some more volunteer tomatoes and here i did buy two peppers they're supposed to be yellow it's interesting oh. how they're purple they're they are. Well, I love peppers. I don't care what color they yeah. are. So for watering, I found these quick connects. It's an easy way to change. Uh, I can use the spray hose here, or I have a connection here, and with a snap, 
I do a drip in this section. So that's that's drip irrigation all over the bed. Oh, I see it in here. All the way through this Connected. section. It nice. winds through, and I have landscape staples that I use to tack it down. So here I have it winding around my plants. Nice. It's a slow drip. There's a pressure reducer on this to have it go slow. So I'll leave it on for maybe an hour. Oh, nice. Very nice. And then I do the same thing here in this section of the garden. These are the landscapes. I'm going to come to. Oh, I see. So I can connect it here. This is the pressure reducer. And I, this is the landscape staple to keep it in place. And the pressure reducer, you buy it separately? Yes. I also put one of the quick connect ends on an oscillating sprinkler so I can do the yard and bigger, bigger sections of the garden. Okay, here's our first zucchini. Very nice. And now we'll get some of these cucumbers. Oh, those are nice. Wow, perfect. Ari, thank you so much for visiting my garden and now I'm looking forward to enjoying some of this produce. We're gonna make a big salad.